Neville Rose, thank you for joining the Business Spectator. Pleasure. Um, I'll start off with uh, Australia and India's bilateral trade. Um, where does Australia stand at the moment? How engaged are we with the Indian economy? Well, in, in absolute numbers, Australia is doing exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. you know, I think the latest figures are of the order of $16 billion of mm -hmm. exports, fastest growing merchandise export market, fourth largest uh, export market. Mm -hmm. Uh, mainly, the, but then if you look at the composition, the composition mm. is really just a few significant uh, areas. Uh, substantially, it's one of resources. Yeah. Uh, the major resources being coal uh, and gold. I mean, oh, India is a still the biggest course, uh, yeah. purchaser of gold for non-monetary, mm. for personal use. So, uh, those are the big, they're $5 billion each. And then there are a few more minerals, mm. uh, copper and the like. and then the next biggest would actually then be education, education. services. Yep. So if you look at that, education services does engage with India significantly because it's a human mm. activity. Uh, all the others are almost entirely impersonal, you could mm. say. It's really, a, there's a demand, the demand takes place. It doesn't necessarily involve a, a, a significant engagement with India or okay. commitment to India other yep. than selling what selling, they have yep. to sell. Yep. And the Indians want, want it, so they're going to keep buying. Mm. Now, you mentioned the education sector, and obviously that came very much in focus uh, in the last six months with regards to the, the events around attacks on Indian yes. students yes. and, and uh, pretty much uh, in some ways a revelation of how the system works here, this concept of schools and, and representatives. Um, how much of a hit was that in India? We, we got a lot of... Uh, mixed messages at that time that are people coming or not, how much of a damage did it cause? No, I, I think the underlying uh, hit is, is, is quite serious, mm. Particu peculi because after all it is a human issue. Mm. Parents can react to, 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 you know, to lack of safety for their children, yeah. uh, the community can identify with, uh, with children who have been, you know, have been attacked, injured, in, in one case killed. Mm. Uh, so that has made a, a significant impact on the way Australia is seen in India. Mm. Uh, it has done also had a hit on our education system because mm. uh, that they, we're not really getting the time to explain the differentiation of the sectors where the problem has taken place. Mm. The problem hasn't been at the university level. It hasn't been at the at this at the government-run TAFE sector. It yeah. has really been very much in the private educational mm -hmm. institutions which were very badly uh, monitored, mm. which were allowed to, 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 uh, to, to pretend to be institutions mm. and which had become kind of uh, a way in which people could get a backdoor immigration mm. up through a, a, an apparent course of study. All of that uh, has made people think twice about Australia, but the deeper thing is that it has reinforced old views of Australia. Mm. And one of the challenges that Australia has is we've got we sh we shouldn't forget our history and we shouldn't be surprised if people express concern about racism in mm. Australia. The way we responded was to deny that there was any racism at yes. all, and that damaged our credibility even, even further. further. Yeah. So we couldn't tell them what a good multicultural society we are and how many mm. Indians have done so well and succeeded in this country, uh, and and so on and so forth. If you start off by admitting the history, admitting that there is residual racism. Mm. And that some of those attacks, you know, w had to have some race, race, racist, uh, mm. uh, you know, component to them. Mm. And then we could talk about the positives. Mm. I think we might have done a much better job. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the denial. So right now, they, they s by and large believe that Australia is unsafe, that there's a lot of racism, and that Australia is a country in denial. And we've got to correct that, and it's right. going to take much longer to correct it than it took to get into that pro in can the I, first place. Can I just ask you something about the resource sector again? Uh, you, you said we are very highly engaged there, but you know, we see a lot of Chinese capital come into this country, Chinese mm -hmm. companies that want to... We haven't seen that same level of movement from Indian companies. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason <coughs> for that? And, and at what point can we see maybe big Indian companies, the yeah. Birlas and the Tatas, maybe start buying stakes in big yeah. projects here? Well, I think I think it has started. Yeah. Uh, I don't, but you're quite right that the relative investment in, in, in Australia has been much smaller than, mm -hmm. than by Chinese companies. Uh, the thing to remember, though, is that when it comes to minerals, also there is a different demand in India 
than there is uh, from China. Mm -hmm. uh, India is, uh, has a surplus of iron ore and in fact is one of the biggest exporters of iron ore to China. Mm -hmm. So uh, that uh, is where most uh, a lot of the investment has taken place, where Australia still has a lot of greenfield sites or opportunities mm. and so on. India's demand has been primarily uh, coal. And I think, you know, finding new coal sites uh, and per particularly coking coal sites mm. is a challenge. And Indian delegations have come here, uh, Coal India, Sail yeah. India, you know, Coal and Steel Authorities, looking for opportunities to invest. Uh, I think it will it will happen. It will it, uh, it it won't be as large. I mean, India's capacity to invest abroad is less than that of China mm -hmm. at present, uh, but but it is sure to to happen. But there have been some significant uh, examples of uh, investment. I mean, the Oswald Group, for example, yes. investing in West Australia in 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 you know the world's biggest uh, mm -hmm. ammonia plant. Yes. Uh, the Gujarat NRE Coke. Uh, in restarting mm -hmm. three mines, underground coal mines in the Illawarra and yep. uh, surrounding Wollongong, which has been very well received. Yeah. So we are beginning to see that happening, okay. but it is still not massive. Just to finish off, I uh, just want to ask one more question. I recently spoke to the head of IAG, uh, who is looking, who sort of mentioned that uh, insurance and the banking is a sector that has enormous potential for Australian banks to yeah. go into India. However, he did mention one thing about the problems of doing business in India, yeah. the regulatory uh, yeah. time, uh, the yeah. time frame that it looks. Is this something that India can do better? And, is yeah, and how do we re yeah, respond to the that? The issue of regulation and deregulation is, is a complex one. There are some sectors where it has moved much further mm. than in others. Uh, the, the banking and insurance area is, is gradually liberali liberalizing. I think the, the answer is to, to, to enter the market uh, in a way that complies with the current requirements, which, which will largely be a case of having minority stake and having an Indian partner. Mm. Uh, but to do that in a way that allows you to, to increase your stake over time mm. as government policy changes. I think if you lock yourself into a commercial arrangement, which then uh, cannot be changed when government allows 100% business, then I think that uh, you know is a disadvantage. In fact, an early mover will be a disadvantage. Okay. Uh, but other than that, I think th the time to move in I is now. Uh, other countries and other companies, you know, the Americans in particular, are moving in. Mm. And I think Australia has got to say yes. This is perhaps not quite as liberal as we would have liked, but there's still a lot of money to be made. With 25 percent of a very successful insurance company in India is still going to yield a lot, a lot of, of yeah. profit. Uh, Mr. Roach, I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you.